Hello guys, so in our last video, we'll see that how to do the data visualization and data analytics from those uh, visualized plot as well. So in this video, it is our final video. And in this video, I will show you that how to uh, get the best player clusters um, on, on the based of uh, performance of the players since 2008. And along with if we build a machine learning model that will help you to uh, predict a match winning based on the real-time scores, real-time overs, and all, all those kind of things. So let's get started with that. So in our last video, you see that we uh, visualize all these kind of plots. So uh, let's just go one step ahead. The first thing, we need to get the best player clusters uh, on the base of the player's performance since the last 14 years. Okay, so first we build a kind of a correlation plot to check that which of the columns are like best that can be used to get the best player clusters so as you just see that there are like so many columns like which are uh, intercorrelated as well so we need to remove those kind of columns who have very strong correlations as well like runs uh, between the ball faced so like these, these kind of columns we need to remove because they have very high kind of correlation so for that we need to get the first the correlation uh, of each column and then when we get the correlation of each column and then we set a threshold for that the threshold we want to remove those kind of uh, columns as well and then we see that these are the like most uh, correlated columns in our data set that we need to remove as well okay so we just do this final df dot drop and drop all these columns that we selected okay so the next thing is we need to get a uh, column in which if there is any kind of a null value fix it with the one as well and then we just start go with the clustering uh, algorithm because we use the clustering algorithm to get the best player clusters on the base of the all the performances that we have we have like these kind of columns that we at the uh, are left at the end so by using these columns we can get the best player clusters so the first thing we need to do is the scaling of all these kind of columns so we do use the standard scaler and we scale all these columns and then we just uh, uh, put these kind of uh, all the columns into our k means clustering model and then we just try to find the best value for k by using the inertia and here we just see that the best value of k we get is around like 4 or 5 I think but I choose the value uh, 4 as well to just to check that uh, uh, what kind of a cluster that I can uh, get out of it and uh, when I just make a new data frame out of it by using these uh, clusters then I got this kind of a data frame like team 1 like this is my cluster 1, cluster 2, cluster 3, cluster 4 so in, in this uh, clusters we have like all the players and as you just, just see that uh, in the cluster 3 we have like very very great players we have like AB de Villiers, Scale MS Dhoni, Dinesh, Karthik, Jadeja, Rohit, Sharma, SK, Raina. We are like best players in this cluster 3. And along with that, in cluster 4 as well, we have like very good players as well. And in cluster 1 as well, we have very, very good players as well. So, uh, yeah. So, that's it. The four clusters on the based of the player performances in the last 8 years that we have. Okay. So, by using like this kind of uh, clustering algorithm we can like build more like advanced uh, clusters on the of the specific size as well so let's just say we want to like build a kind of a new team and uh, we want to select the players as well on the base of their uh, past performances and we want to stick the team size to only 11 and then we can just uh, uh, set the team size to only 11 and then we can build our new team as well on the base of performances that we want so like these kind of uh, uh, problems can be solved by using this kind of uh, uh, techniques or algorithms as well. Okay, let's build a winning prediction model now. So for that kind of thing, the first thing we need to know is, so we need to like uh, uh, build a kind of a new data frame from the scratch because in that now we want to build a winning prediction that is based on the team as well, not based on the players. So that's why we need to like build a new data frame out of it for that i just take the balls kind of uh, uh data frame and then group by by id and innings as well and then sum sum up the total runs so in that way we got the score 
that is scored by the first team who goes for the batting and then we just need scores for the first innings here okay because we need the score of the first team who get the chance of batting okay then next thing we just set the target then how we set the target we just add one plus in that uh, inning score and then we get the target here okay and then we just merge these this kind of uh, uh, data frame into our matches data set so that after matches uh, data set will be merged we just do some kind of uh, feature engineering like uh, uh, rename the names or teams kind of thing as well and then we have like these kind of themes that we have now and then we just like check is there any kind of uh, uh, like uh, these teams existed in these kind of uh, matches data set or not or like that so so that we need a get of a clean data set and af after that we got all these things we get the unique and then we got to know that yeah our teams are like uh, completely unique now okay okay so uh, like when we get this kind of uh, data set at the end that has like all the kind of team details along with our uh, inning score and the target score as well then we need to uh, we get to know that what is the uh, next team that who got the chance to play in the innings two is doing so we need, need to like make it a real time thing so that's why we need to make make it a real time thing by ball by ball uh, data center as well. so that we got to know that ball by ball uh, that team plays like that okay so i, I just uh, show you that how to do it the first thing we need to uh, like remove all kind of unnecessary columns from here so so that we can get only the columns we need like id city team one team two winning team target okay these kind of uh, uh, data sets now we have okay after that we just need to get the uh, like uh, uh, betting team and then on the betting team as well we need to calculate the scores as well okay so for that kind of thing when we just uh, merge this kind of a ball data set with the matches uh, data set on the id then we got to know that we have betting team now is here along with we have like target is here and uh, then we just get to know the what what is the second inning team doing so second inning team is team two okay so on the part of team two we just like again group by on that uh, uh, score and then we just try to calculate the score of each ball like we have no ball, ball one ball two ball three ball four so we get to know the score of each ball in that that's why we use come sum here because come sum means it is a cumulative sum so it just uh, like sum on the each row like uh, uh, let let's just say it scores like uh, on the ball one it scores one score on the ball two it scores three scores so on the ball three the scores are getting added like one then one plus three is equal to four 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 plus one is equal to five in that way in that way this function will work okay so as you just see it just try to uh getting the score of the current score like 0 0 1 1 1 and then if a player scores and another score as well then it just make it two in that way okay so in the uh, next thing we just like to get the uh, like how many runs left now because when that that team scores one score the total target is a 131 and when score team one score the total runs left is equal to 130 so in that way we got the complete data set of ball by ball on the each ball that how the team is playing so that it is easy for our machine learning model to understand that how that team is playing okay so in the next thing we got to know that how many overs are uh, left as well or how many balls are left so we get to know the by this and there is many balls are uh, left now and then we just get to know how many wickets are uh, left as well so like these three columns are built now and then we got to know that uh, what what is the current uh, run run rate and what is the required uh, run rate as well and then and then then we got to know that yeah current run rate and required run rate is there and then we got to know that if the batting team is the winning team or not like we have that now we have that batting team is here and uh, and here we have the winning team is here if these two teams are same then the result go goes to one else result goes to zero so in in that way we have one target variable as well that we want to predict okay 
and then we just got here and then we just like to check for the index and on the base of that index as well we just like to build our whole uh, data set on the base of team 1 and team 2 okay uh, so here it is done I think yeah as if we have the team 1 team 1 is there and the polling team is Rajasthan Royals betting, betting team is Gujarat Titans here team 1 team 2 is here but it is all synced up now okay and the next thing we just uh, uh, get the required columns for our uh, prediction model and then we just uh, uh, fit our this prediction model uh, on our uh, machine learning model but before that we just do the one hot encoder or the column transformers kind of, kind of thing to do that we can just convert these categorical variables into the integer variables as well and then we do the test train split and then we fit our machine learning model into the random forest classifier so when we do the random forest classifier production here and then we just try to predict for a one team let's just say I try, try to predict for the Royal Challengers Bangalore versus Mumbai Indians match that is happening in the Mumbai this is the, the runs left, this is the balls left, this is the big wickets left, this is the current run rate, required run rate, this is the target so we have all these kind of things here and now it predicts that whether this team will gonna win or not, which team gonna win or not so it just says that Royal Challengers Bangalore have the chances to win is 48% and Mumbai Indians is about 52% so in that way we just build a kind of a real time um, winning prediction of the IPL team so that's it from this uh, video guys if you like have any kind of uh, questions about this GDD model or any kind of thing you can just ask me in the comment section